Welcome again. Today we look at how to determine the level of dissolved oxygen in a water sample using the Winkler titration. And first, we collect the water sample by placing this flask beneath the surface and excluding air bubbles. The flask must be capped while still beneath the surface of the water. Now we prepare the sample for the Winkler titration by the addition of alkaline potassium iodide and manganese sulfate. Once we perform this addition immediately upon collecting the sample, then we need not worry about oxygen dissolving from the outside because manganese ions react with hydroxide ions to first produce this part of the precipitate which then reacts with or fixes all of the oxygen in the sample as this precipitate. And here we divide this equation by 2 to simplify the calculations later on, showing that half a mole of oxygen is used to produce one mole of this precipitate. Next we ensure that the entire sample is reacted then sulfuric acid is added to the precipitate and a gold color begins to develop as the precipitate begins to dissolve. When the entire precipitate is dissolved, iodide ions would have come out of solution to exist as free iodine. Giving this typical golden appearance to the solution. This equation summarizes the process. With one mole of this solid tied to half of a mole of oxygen being acidified and releasing these iodide ions as one mole of I2. So half of a mole of oxygen fixed by one mole here releasing one mole of I2. Next we determine the concentration of iodine in a fixed volume by titrating with 0.05 molar sodium thiosulfate. And here, one mole of free iodine reacts with two moles of thiosulfate to once again produce two moles of free ions. Just before the end point of the titration, starch indicator is added, and this characteristic blue color fades to this colorless appearance. And now it is possible to titrate and to determine the amount of I2 and then to determine the amount of oxygen. Finally, we can convert the moles of oxygen per dm3 or per liter to grams per liter, which is the same as saying parts per thousand. And then dividing by a thousand, we can convert parts per thousand into a final answer of parts per million. And this is the most commonly used unit for expressing the levels of dissolved oxygen in water samples.